Just doing a little quick update. Um, this is my fish tank. I've put shade cloth over it for summer um, just to stop the algae blooming. And there's all the little fishies. You can see silver perch in there. The little fingerlings are bass. The water's actually crystal clear. Some of those perch are ready for harvest. You probably can't see, or you won't be able to see, but there's um, some little catfish in there as well. They're all happy in there. Not as active as um, trout, like not as exciting to feed or anything, but I've found silver perch to be pretty bulletproof. In three years I can count on one hand the amount I've lost, so that's a pretty good rate. Um, once these guys grow out, I'm going to experiment um, and just grow out bass. They take a bit longer to grow, but I believe they're the nicest fish to eat, or one of, fresh water. So we'll soon see, and the catfish in there as well. Let's go take a look at the garden. This system is a secondary IBC single setup that I've put in, just because I had all the bits there, may as well get it to use. Um, in here we have rainbow chard, strawberries, tomatoes, um, there's some bird of paradise that I've put in there, just to get in some bees hopefully. Got some sweet corn in there, which is doing excellent. You can see by the leaves that there's next to no deficiencies in this system. Um, and here is some kohlrabi. I've never grown that before, so if anyone can tell me what to do with it, that would be excellent because I don't know how to cook it or prepare it. Over here we have garlic chives. A must for all systems because I just they grow downwards and use up some of your uh, vertical space Some more corn in the back And in this tank there is um, A few goldfish There's three big foot-long goldfish as well as eight um, Cod and this one's on a flood and drain. No external air at the moment. I just want to see how it goes with just a single flood and drain. Hopefully that's enough aeration. I might, down the track, when everything starts growing a bit better, I'll put in some more, more air. I've noticed the cod are very shy. I can't even see any of them. There's eight cod fingering. Blood and drain, fire and elbow, and work excellent. And this pump is just a really L cheapo, I think it's 1500 litres per hour, which is like $20 on eBay, and that's, that's just work. Pushing the limit so you couldn't go any um, smaller, but it, it's working and I haven't had to throttle anything. I believe this this one is a berry of some kind. It's been in for two years now. It hasn't fruited or anything or any shown any signs of fruit, so I don't know much about it. But it, it's doing nice and healthy. Um, my corn just got smashed with all the winds that we've had down here in Melbourne. Um, I'm going to try and stake that up this afternoon.
Got some lettuce in here that's bolted, which I'm trying to get seeds from. More berries. This, I don't know its proper name, but it's actually a cola plant. These leaves, when you put them in a glass of uh, water or stew it up as a tea, you get a real cola flavour. So what I've been doing is um, getting a good punch, uh, pinch of this, boiling it up as tea, and then putting it in the fridge and making our own like cola-inspired cordial for the girls, no sugar. Um, here I've got more corn, and that, that would have to be probably nine feet tall. And I think this is the black corn off memory. It's probably going to taste no good, but it's, I think it's more of a, um, a waxy black corn that you use for corn flour or other purposes. This bed I'm starting to clean out and I'll replant, but I've got some watermelon, cucumbers, zucchinis, more chard, some feral tomatoes that have just popped up, uh, the asparagus. Trying to get some seeds off it. That'd have to be six foot tall. Um, a single corn that I tried to rescue. Don't know if it's going to come back, but we'll see. And there's uh, more watermelon in here. And the next bed is primarily corn, but there's the odd cucumber and zucchini in here. And this one is a popcorn variety. Um, I didn't realize you had separate varieties for making popcorn, so we'll give that a go. And these are what they call, um, I think it's pineapple tomatoes. Inside it's a red flesh, red and yellow mix, which is something different. It's a heritage variety, heirloom. You can see the difference with the kohlrabi. This one's in soil versus the other monster in the other thing. They were both planted at the same time from seed. More cucumber, zucchini. You can see some forming. And this corn I've tried to separate so it doesn't cross pollinate with this corn. Uh, this one is a white corn. I think I took a photo of the last one I picked. It's a white waxy, um, white waxy maize corn. I believe they use it in adhesives and non-edible products. Just thought I'd give it a go. And this little bed here is primarily a zucchinis and cucumbers. With crushed eggshells in there just to get some calcium into the soil. Save throwing them all in the garbage bin. It's a bit of a waste. And this powdery mildew. Um, I've been treating that with a mixture of, um, I think it was 50 50 water and milk. Um, and the leaves that I've been doing are clearing up. It takes a bit longer because it's not using chemicals, but it does work. compost bin still chugging away put a lot of eggshells in there because I believe the external uh, the extra surface area on the shells creates a lot of the good bacteria needed to break down this compost um, I'm probably going to try and invest in a shredder or something so I can shred this down rather than just throw it in whole and I don't have a catcher on the mower or I'd do it that method of just running it over and make my own mulch this bed was filled with beetroot which has all been harvested so I might give this a bit of a rest at the moment and um, fill it up with some dynamic lifter and down this end we've got some lone corn which I pulled out from over planting in the other beds some kale and chard strawberries mint And again, I pull out the odd corn if I've overplanted in the normal dirt beds, just so they don't suck up too much nutrients and deprive themselves. There's more heritage tomatoes in here, which I'm going to try and train to grow up this chicken fence. 
Uh, this is a potato I believe I left in from last season. There's some more corn. Let's go check out the aquaponics. Now in here, with the hot weather, everything has just gone crazy. I'm letting it grow high um, in the hope that it will shade the garden over summer rather than shade cloth everything make a nice bit of a shade canopy this is a grapevine um, let's see if I can show you the grapes sorry for the dodgy camera work so I've got some um, some grapes in here growing which are probably ready to come off and I've found some maybe someone can tell me why some of them have been doing this and splitting I think that means they've become mature fast, like a bolted, and um, I'm hoping there are little seeds in there that I can collect and replant. Now on this side of the grapevine, I only found this the other day, but I've got a pocket of grapes in here, which are also splitting. Now someone can tell me why. I really don't know if it's a deficiency or if it's kind of bolted without ripening or maybe it, it got too hot but on the inside of those there appears to be a single seed now this bit I've just ripped out all the kohlrabi because um, we couldn't really couldn't really stomach it, it tasted like rubbish not that the aquaponic stuff tastes any different to what you buy. It's just we don't like coal. Uh, we don't like um, we don't like the taste. It's quite horrible. Now that vine here is passion fruit. And you can see the odd little passion fruit forming. I've done another clip on how to self-pollinate rather than wait for nature to do its course and these are the um, these are the passion fruit flowers you basically need to use a small paintbrush and get the pollen off here and then pollinate underneath these little nodules I've had some success uh, as I'll show you here and that would be a passion fruit forming out of the passion fruit flower. You can see that vine has really drawn mental. But again, I'm not concerned because it is summer and we've had about a week of 30 plus 40 degrees Celsius days. So it's good to shade the rest of the plants. Um, the next bed is leftover um, leftover um, what do you call it kale sorry don't know if I said chard before kale kale apparently it's a superfood but we just can't stomach it it tastes horrible we don't have a juicer so I can't juice it and eating it raw is quite gross it comes from the cabbage family so maybe if we try steaming it and cooking it, maybe that will improve the flavour. Um, since I've just topped up all the, the trace elements in here, there doesn't appear to be any, any deficiencies that I can see. Got some more tomato plants in here. Just to give you a perspective, that's what it looks like. It's really overgrown. After summer, I'll start pulling everything out. More corn in here. This is just a standard sweet corn. But with the massive winds, I left all the greenhouse open and these have all knocked over. So they're probably going to have to pull, come out soon. Now, 
these are chili, but I don't know the variety. A lot of people have asked me what they are because they grow in winter as well as in summer. Let's see if I can find one. Unidentified chili, but it grows excellent in winter and in summer. And they are quite hot and make an excellent sweet chili sauce. And yeah, we've got an abundance of those. You can see all the red poking through the vines. And that's on its second year. Uh, over the back, we've got a what we thought was a raspberry, but now I don't, I'm not so sure. This is the fruit that's growing on it. Focus. We found that to be quite bitter. So it's not very pleasant to eat uh, until it goes black in which case by the time you pick it it's just mush like jam in your hands so that'll come out because it's too, just too prickly to handle and it is really taking over and more uh, I really should know I think this is Warrigal Greens I'm sure Jayendra or Rob will correct me So this is five IBC grow beds feeding that tank. Certainly no deficiencies that I can see. And just keep in mind that it's been, like I said, a week of 35 to 40 degree days. So I hope this wouldn't get a hammering and everything start dying. It's, it's doing good. Now, I just topped up the system with some of this product, Boron, which is supposed to be good for um, fruit, beetroot, apple, and I know you're not meant to put zinc in aquaponics, but a little bit didn't hurt with some manganese, and uh, you can see there, that's green, uh, the green and yellow leaf. That's what a lot of my plants look like. As soon as I put some of this in, everything's just gone dark, dark green. But after speaking to a few people, um, you really can't use too much of this, otherwise you get, or uh, well you can get heavy metal poisoning from your system, which is news to me, but um, well, there you go. So use those in extreme moderation and only as needed. Sorry about that, my, I'm recording on my iPhone 5 and it ran out of storage. Um, yeah, this is the bio barrel. For most people this just simply isn't required. Um, I'm experimenting with trying to overstock my fish. Uh, by overstock I mean more than my grow beds can handle. So this should take the excess, excess um, ammonia and nitrite and just get rid of that out of the system. Just got two air stones in there at the moment. Um, so that, that's it for the moment, so we're technically in summer, if you like this video please like and subscribe, thank you very much uh, and I'll do another update shortly.